And we are live! Welcome to the WAN Show, you guys! It's got tech news, it's got guests, it's got everything except some kind of a coherent strategy today. Because I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. Okay, one thing. First first things first. Hi, Justine. Hi. Welcome to the show. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's, a, it's absolutely my pleasure. This is actually our first time meeting, even though she's been here all day. We actually have hardly interacted. <laughs> I was like, are you sure he's here? Did I get tricked? Is, is this like some warehouse that I just showed up to? Is this how I die? I'm confused. <laughs> At the very back of a working complex? Yeah. yeah. Just drive to the very end. I, I, okay, in my defense. Okay, it's You're not busy. The, it's not the least sketchy area. No, it's not. It's I great. I mean, wait. <laughs> it's not the most sketchy area. <laughs> it's also not the least sketchy I area. I saw Starbucks on the way, so I felt at home. <laughs> right. There you go. Nice. Um, so she's here, and then we've also got Steven from Gamers Nexus and Riley slash Keys from NCIS Tech Tips because Luke and I, along with our other special guests, um, I don't know if I'm going to bring you guys on the show because you guys are getting plenty of camera time, but get on here Can't and kind of say hi. Oh, uh, are they being uh, all camera shy? Oh, you guys are so bashful. You, you guys have literally had a piece of glass in your face all week. Are we doing all um, the time? Or? Oh, Wait, should we, do we leave now? Oh, oh wow. <laughs> Look at that. It's Rod. Here, take my spot. I can't have his shirt on. Uh, oh, yeah. Wait, you oh, yeah, it's okay. Yeah, you it's might okay. Want to scoot over. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. It's Rod and Bob. What's up, guys? Did Linus and Luke just film <laughs> another week-long show with these guys? Why do we keep inviting you here? <laughs> um, so our celebrity judges were Justine, Steven, and Riley, and our co-competitors were Rod and Bob. Stay tuned because Tech Showdown, um, it'll be, I forget what I'm allowed to call them now. Uh, whatever. The Tech Showdown videos that are going to be coming soon are going to be totally unlike previous Tech Showdowns. It's going to be pretty flippin' sick. So, um, right now it's showing viewers zero, which usually <laughs> I have the Twitch chat up. It's possible we are streaming to no one. It's also <laughs> entirely possible that it's not reporting correctly. How so many guys, I'm, I'm, I'm going to find out what's going on. You know what? It happens. I pretty much walked off of the set onto here, not pretty much, literally. That is exactly what happened. And, it is very uh, true. And I didn't have a lot of time to kind of set everything up correctly, so you'll have to oh, bear with me I here. I got a notification that it's live. Oh, that's <laughs> good. Yeah, this yeah. Looks, yeah, we're looks live. live. There are people watching. It's all good. Okay, so thanks, guys. Uh, so stay tuned for that. And why don't we jump into our oh intro for the week. Boop. Well, usually we'd tease some topics. Oh, yeah, normally we tease some topics. Whatever, we've got crazy guests. We don't need topics. Fair, fair. You could sit here and talk about anything. Uh, let me see. some of the best shows have no news. That's true. <laughs> right now, you know. <laughs> All right. Functionality is a big issue. Sponsors for the show today. <laughs> And let's get started. So, the original article here is from Tom's Guide. I'm going to go ahead and throw that yeah, up. Post. But the word on the street is when this click, you know, works at some point. It's a word that I'm pretty excited about. The iPhone yeah. 8 is the world's fastest phone to go along with my world's slowest Wi Fi right now. Apparently not even close. Did you see six core processor? Do you see this coming? I uh, no, but I did see a bunch of reviews of people doing speed tests, yeah. even comparing the eight to the Note eight, which was incredible because the Note eight definitely did lag behind. Yeah, yeah. Like specifically, if we look at three D Mark, the iPhone eight sixty two thousand eight plus sixty four thousand Note eight you just referenced thirty nine thousand. Yeah, I mean, it's one of those things, I, I, I got a lot of flack for my Note 8 review. People didn't really like it. They said I didn't really give it enough credit. Um, but one of my key points was not that it was a bad phone at all. I said it's a great phone. It's probably the productivity king if you have any use for the stylus whatsoever. Oh, I have it right here, actually. There you go. And I, being a huge iPhone fan, too, I was quite surprised how much I really liked this Have phone. you watched movies on it? Um, I watch Netflix. Okay, so yeah. any 21 by 9, like, ultra wide screen content. It felt a little bit, was, I was, it wasn't ultra wide, but it was still, it felt a little bit strange because it is right. a little bit, I don't know. 
It's well, it's rounded. Yeah. I mean, that too. I'm not going to complain because I mean, I watch stuff on planes all the time. So that's right. where I consume most of my content. So I'm like, this is a step up from the back of an airplane. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I mean, and I think cameras too are something that is what people are mostly into. Most normal person who is going to go get their phone, they just wanted to take incredible photos to share out. Yeah. And, you know, even getting a chance to see it at the Apple event, I mean, and, ugh, out in the gold. I'm, so, I'm getting so excited. <laughs> this is like what I live for, you guys. <laughs> but in comparison to the X, that's what I'm going to be interested to see because right. the hype around the 8 is way less than previous years. And there were tons of people that were talking about there were no lines, like right. the usual, but I feel like that'll be way different for the X. Oh, the X is going to be yeah. a completely different story because, I, and don't take this the wrong way, it's, it, it doesn't have to be a derogatory term. But that's the one the zombies are lining up for. Yeah, I will be there. Like if I was a <laughs> <laughs> with my undead bells on. <laughs> um, and and it's just it's it's one of those things where anyway. So back to the back to the Note Eight. One of my criticisms, one of my key criticisms, was that every previous Note had something really different, really killer about it. Mm -hmm. And I feel like Apple killed that with the iPhone X. But they didn't do that with, with the eight. With the face, right? No, the right. eight is the most boring phone of all time. I mean, yeah. it's essentially a seven S. Can you believe they're still using the same shell as the six? <laughs> no, which is kind of crazy. I mean, they tried to get away with it by saying it's the glass back, which it does look really good. Like yeah. I like that look. That's going back to like the iPhone four mm -hmm. when they first yeah. introduced that, which was beautiful. I, it's a great, I it's love really the four. Beautiful. I still have an iPhone four actually on my nightstand. It's a great look. You it, iPod it, right? Basically. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. I just use it when I need, like, a, if I'm going to somewhere where, like, I might get mugged or whatever, <laughs> and I but I want a phone. I just take my iPhone four. People are like, "Give me your phone." I'm just like, "Sure." sure. <laughs> well, clearly you don't have much love for it if you're going to give it up in the street. Well, you know? come on. It's worth less than my life. I'll say that much. <laughs> to add some more stats to this before we keep yeah. on going, uh, in Geekbench four, the iPhone eight was fifty four percent faster than the Galaxy Note eight. And in 54%? just fifty-four percent, fifty-four percent, and just in standard media encoding, uh, I don't remember exactly what was. It was a two-minute four K video yeah. encoded. The iPhone eight finished in forty-two seconds. The Note eight took more than three minutes, and the Galaxy S eight Plus took more than four minutes. So what that tells us is two things. Number one is that the iPhone eight is hella fast, and number two is that they are actually walking the walk when it comes to. GPU computing and CPU computing and marrying them together. Yeah. Because AMD has been talking about that since the acquisition of ATI back in, what was it? Steven would know this, what was it 2008? What? Uh, ATI acquisition? Yeah, that's all right. Yeah, so whatever, about 10 years ago. Since then, AMD has been talking about how the GPU is gonna be this fundamental fusion, they called it. You were not gonna be able to tell the difference between a CPU doing something and a GPU doing something. You were just gonna click go on a web page, or you were gonna click encode on a video, or uh, you know, warp stabilize in a, in a video editing application, and it was just gonna use whichever one it used or some mixture of the two, and we were gonna treat the GPU like, like more G CPU cores and programmers were gonna get into it, and it never happened. But this is one of those infuriating things for the non-Apple folks out there, where Apple takes an idea that everybody else has been talking about for all this freaking time, and, and then actually does it. it. Yeah. I mean, that's classic Apple right. fashion. I mean, that, you know, being a huge Apple fan, I think I get so much crap from the rest of you guys, which, you know, I, I and for fair, for fair reasons, which I'm not <laughs> saying, but you know, I mean, what Apple is good at is taking all the things that everyone has been doing really, really well, and then they make it a widespread thing for yeah. everyone to enjoy and well, easy to use. Like during the Apple event, there was a few things. I know wireless charging was one of them for me, where finally. I was like, yep. thank yeah. God finally. they're doing it, finally. because now everyone will do it. Exactly. Finally. And yeah. I am. I was so afraid that just completely unnecessarily they were going to make it some other. Technology. They were going to make it proprietary. Uh, me too. I was like, no. I please. was. <laughs> I was sure of it. I was too. But you know what? I think we actually do have like lackluster but present adoption of the technology 
broadly yeah. enough, I think we have that to thank for Apple kind of going, okay, this has enough momentum now that we don't need to absolutely break all the things for no apparent reason. Yeah, and I mean, I thought they might have switched to USB-C for the X, but they didn't. I was yeah. hoping that they would. I yeah. was kind of hoping that they would as well. Uh, um, and I was really hoping, like, a lot of devices have a Type-C port, but if you go and transfer photos off of them, they're actually running at USB 2 speeds. Mm -hmm. And I know that Apple actually did have a USB 3 lightning connector on the iPad Pro as of, I believe, the first gen. Um, so I'll be interested to see if the lightning connector on the X is at least USB 3. Yeah. That would be sick. Now, quick um, question. I just noticed you called it the X. Um, it's a mistake. Sorry, it's 10. I know. And I do that because I use Final Cut X, which is also Final Cut 10. Right. And I've been calling it that okay. since the beginning. Yeah. So it's, I'm so sorry. But I'm then <laughs> Apple's thing is like OS X is not OS X. It's OS 10. So so they're, they have a long enough history of X yeah. is 10 that we're just supposed to ignore that all the other phones are called 7 and not VII. Well, where did the iPhone 9 go? Yeah. that. I have a theory. I think the iPhone 9 is coming next September. That's actually a brilliant idea that I didn't even think about. So it. the iPhone 9 is coming, and it's going to still be the like step yeah. down. It's going to be like the, the new SE. Okay. And then the X2 or the 11 or whatever whatever they end up going with in terms of this series naming. Or the X Mark II. You know what? The, I hear, again, tinfoil hat. I think they're just going to call it the iPhone 10 again next year. I think they're just going to call it the same thing because they've done it with every other bloody product line. If they actually add like Mark II, that's kind of cool. But they don't. Yeah, I know. That's the issue. You said Mark II, and I was like, that's pretty Late sweet. 2018. No, the naming convention is <laughs> a little bit off. I mean, technically, the, the 8 should be a 7S. But I mean, I'm, if I'm yeah. not mistaken, I believe it's the same A11 chip that is also in the 8 and the X. Is that correct? I believe so, yeah. Yeah. So. I don't know. I mean, they're still sharing a lot of that same technology, and I think it's going to be like, do you want facial recognition, and do you want to give up that Touch ID button? Yeah. I don't want to give up Touch ID. I, I don't love think, Touch and ID. I, and I don't think my parents would either. So I feel like it's there's a different kind of generation gap, and I don't know. It's, yeah. it's going to be interesting to see when the X comes out, like yeah. what people kind of gravitate towards. I think that's part of the reason we didn't get a new shell for the 8, is that now it's the value mm. thing. Yeah. 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 In, the, in much the same way that, like, you... Um, you know, if you buy an SE, it's that iPhone 5 shell. Yeah. So the value phone is like, the, <laughs> like it's one of those things where Apple... It's status. You know, it's, it's, appearance. it's a status symbol. Where if you get the jet black one, everyone knows you're a mega baller and bought the top of the line. And then you put a case on it. I know. <laughs> this, this is terrible. <laughs> but in much the same way... You don't even know. There's no way you could even tell unless you look. I think Apple wants people who buy an 8 to feel like last-gen chumps. A little bit. For at a glance, for it to not look any different. For sure. Yeah, I mean... Because they even rotated the camera, right? No, that's on the X. The X has the rotated camera. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Yes. Yep. So it's like extremely recognizably different. Yes, it's really because different. Because I don't think that was for a reason. Could have been. Yeah, I'm not actually sure. That'd be interesting to see. I'd like to see like an iFixit teardown or something. So it's killer fast, which really surprised me uh, because Apple stubbornly stuck to two core designs for the longest time when the entire rest of the industry was going like, no, put all the cores into the phones, even though historically it hasn't made a huge difference to performance in the applications that most people are using. But if I had to guess, I would say this, uh, this, this utilization of both CPU and GPU and this addition of multiple cores is really Apple's way of saying, okay, look, we think that people are going to need all these cores for the kinds of workloads that are coming to phones in the near future. And if it's, if it's Apple, they're pretty good at predicting that. Now, I had people approach me out of the blue and say, can you believe so much of the keynote was about this stupid like facial the emoji wa thing? Oh, that, well, and they, they spent a lot of time on the watch. Which okay, that did, was actually. dumb. Yeah, because who cares about the watch? No offense. Okay, but to be fair, to okay, listen, you you will have your entire. Like, you don't even need to have your phone. Like you can have LTE yeah. on your wrist. Granted, yeah. the battery life is not very good. I think there, you might have talk time of like an hour. But the fact that you don't need your phone, you can literally do. Okay, don't. I don't want to. Don't. Don't you. Don't you shake your head. Don't. I'll stand up. <laughs> You're gonna be out of frame. <laughs> I don't care. I mean, I don't think it's for everybody, but I. I think that that is somewhat revolutionary. 
revolutionary in the fact that you really don't need this. I don't need anything. I can and, go and for a walk. It, I don't. And you can go for a walk, but don't go far. Don't go yeah, far. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Brandon. It's because Justine's a little bit further back here. If you, if you, if you oh, scooch yeah, up, yeah, then we're good. Yeah. There we yep. go. Yep. And okay. I was getting rowdy and like, don't yeah. you start dissing we're, we're, the watch. I, I was, yeah, look. What were the, we talking about? The watch. The watch. It has the potential. I, okay, I have a Mark Zero or whatever. I have the original yeah. one. And my issue with it is that it's a development kit. It is not a finished product. It is a showcase of what they want the Apple Watch to do with a piss poor battery and no ability to have the actual time showing all the time. Well, at least I know what time it is. It sometimes takes a little while. Yeah. But I, and I do think that, of course, this is going to be the first gen of like LTE. The, uh, so, yeah. Come on. So, I mean, the joke Work in my review me. is that it works great if you're sitting there and if you don't mind whoever you're with to know that you're like, yeah. Yo, what time it is. But like, okay, imagine this. Like, so in my review, I bring up, like, what if you're in the middle of an awkward sexual encounter? You're on your back. You know, you want to know what time it is. It literally doesn't work. Well, I mean, you can't find out. Who you're talking you to. You can't find out when it's going to be over. I mean, like, I love my Apple Watch. So that's totally fine for me. Oh, I'm just uncomfortable. It's part of the experience. <laughs> oh, yeah. Understandably, understandably. But does it have the red dot on it? Because if not, it's not LTE and I need to leave. Oh, damn. So. There you go. And is it ceramic? I need to know. No. I think, I think it makes a little bit more sense maybe in the States because you guys can get companion sims fairly easily. I, I don't think, think it's coming up here. here. Is it, it's not yet, really. Okay. Well, and I think in Europe it's less common, too. So, oh. so if I came here, I actually wouldn't be able to use it. So oh. Let's talk about the bump. Okay, so la last, last Apple topic for now, but let's talk about the bump on the watch then. Um, they made a big song and dance about how they used the same frame with all the new tech packed same into frame. it. Two pieces of paper thicker At, the crystal. Okay. Where's the end point of that? Are they just gonna keep? Are they just gonna keep <laughs> doing this and just keep making the bump bigger? But you, I, honestly, I looked at it and if and then I put it on and I could not tell a difference. I mean, you like, two right. pieces of paper. What? Two. It seems like it would be very hard to notice. You would not be able to notice because yeah. you already can feel this when it's on your wrist. But yeah, you, yeah, you're not the two pieces of paper. You're fine. Yeah. But if you want to find some more reasons to hate it, that's oh, fine. oh, that's <laughs> no, we don't have time for that. That's pretty. Uh, that's pretty easy for me to do. <laughs> Uh, hold on a second. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Let me just see if there's anything else interesting in here. Yeah. Oh. No, I don't like that. Oh, okay, one. this is off <gasps> MacRumors.com. I have some oh. bad news. Were you? Did you know this yet? Uh, I mean, we've kind of all been assuming it since they announced it. Dun so. dun dun! iPhone 10 production faces further delays. Will start in mid October. Okay, I got two questions for you. Do you think, apparently, final production of the iPhone 10 has yet to even start? And okay. that's, I mean, pre-orders are starting the 3rd or 27th? Wait, pre-orders are the 3rd, and it's supposed to ship the 27th. So, if you had to guess, what do you think it is? What's, what do I think What's it the is? supply chain issue? Yeah. Hmm. Do you think, okay, do you think it's that they can't get enough? Or do you think it's that they need too much? I guess it's, it's sort of two different ways of looking at it. So they, c I mean, realistically, they obviously made one. Well, they I had it on the stage. Like they may have been waiting though to see how the eight did. You think so? Potentially. I mean, because I they. Think it's the screen. You think it's the screen? Aren't they getting the screen from Samsung? They are. Yeah. So they could also be limiting the display. I need to. I, I don't. Oh. There's not a ton of room. Yeah, Sorry. I know. Well, no, don't scoot over more because you're going to go into. Yeah, the then you're in the. I'll, just, I'll stay on the edge. I'll, Look, I'll we care. aren't set up for guests it's, very well. Sorry. We're, we're like this. Mic is in like a terrible position. There's a way better way to do this setup, and I have not been approved yet to fix it. So, you haven't? No, I asked you to, and you were like, "That's way too expensive." It's way too what? expensive. It's like four or five hundred bucks. Yeah, no, we're not. Should here. we yeah, start exactly. a GoFundMe? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's the answer to any stupid you thing. You could also need. just take this mic and like probably get Jake to 3D print something. To make yeah, that would probably work. Yeah. That would probably work. Yeah, well, there was also some people that were talking about they weren't 100% sure if the facial recognition was ready, so it could also be a software thing. Right. That might so, have been a response, yeah, to it, what happened on stage. But what happened on stage was that phone had been restarted, and you anytime you have to restart it, you have to add the pin. Yeah. Um, oh. So that was, that was not a facial recognition issue. Wow, someone's so, pissed about that. Yeah, so I mean, it could be a combination of software not ready and also supply demand for the screens, which is very realistic. Yeah, yeah, this article also covered that the iPhone 8 is not getting as much interest from customers as previous smartphones launched this fall and s suggests that there could be many Apple fans holding out for the iPhone 10. Yeah. Really? 
Yeah. Wow, what a thought. Or you just get the eight and then get the ten and then, you know. And just keep they them They commit both. you. They're like, you have a problem. You don't. They, and then you, don't. <laughs> you, could just, you, could just, you could just rub them on your body every day. Well, I was surprised. Try, try to absorb the appleness. Because <laughs> my sister today, she's like, should I go buy a phone? I was like, oh, you're never going to get one. She's like, well, walked into Best Buy, got one. And just, I was like, well, that was easy. So I'm not sure right. if the supply, I mean, people, like, are still getting them same day and the lines weren't very long but the pre-orders was very smooth and normally right. all of the apple pre-orders is a disaster so maybe things just worked well for the pre-orders it is a um it is a real departure from standard apple operating procedure for them to roll out a slide that basically says it's everything you love about the iphone 7 but better for for the iphone 8 yeah w w nothing they didn't say magical they didn't say revolutionary yeah. they didn't say yeah. Because it's not Just though. Better. So, but usually they find a way to make it seem like that. That's true. Well, I think they, they use were... plastic, so it's unapologetic. <laughs> but they were saving that for the X. Ten, ten. I guess so, but it's just like they still need to sell iPhone eights. Yeah, I, I bet they probably won't have that much of an issue. Yeah, probably not. Probably not. And they'll be able to slow sell them over time, so they'll move them eventually. Yeah. All right, so our next topic, um, thank you, and yes, I'll, thank you. I'll talk guys. to you soon yes. once, once we're done the show. Our next topic is definitely right in Steven's wheelhouse, so get on in here. All right. This is fun. How's it going? Pretty good. Do you want to introduce yourself? Uh, sure. I'm Steve from Gamers Nexus. I think that pretty much wraps it up. <laughs> <laughs> we, we do technical hardware reviews and analysis. All right. Speaking of technical hardware reviews and I'm gonna, analysis, I'm going to add to that for a quick second. We've referenced Steve and Gamers Nexus quite a few times on Wan Show. If you've heard us talk about things like the Noctua color controversy and a few other yeah. things, you guys followed up. Yeah, with that. that that one was interesting. Yeah. So yeah. if you guys want to see stuff like that, one thing that I really like on you guys' channel is how you'll dive into like how something was made. Yeah. And kind of sometimes rip a company a new one a little bit. But yeah, a little. We yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like it. It's a fine line to walk, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I like the attention to detail. Anyways. Well liked by consumers. It. You get a mixed reaction <laughs> on the other side of things if you mention uh, Gamers Nexus. So, rumored Coffee Lake pricing. Okay. So, okay. Now, I don't know how much you know or don't know, and you don't know how much I know or right, don't know right. about Coffee Lake. So all we can go based on is what we are reading off of this page in front of us, which is copied off of pchubonline.pl or awesome-table.com, okay? So this is what we're going on. This is all the information that we have, but there is some good information in here. So it tells us how many cores it's rumored to have, uh, what the TDP it's rumored to be, will be, but the, <clears throat> tells us the rumored TDP, tells us rumored cache, tells us socket uh, rumored, and it tells us clock speed rumors as well. So apparently, the Core i7-8700K might end up landing about $400 as a rumored to be six core 12 thread processor at 3.7 to 4.7 gigahertz and um you know, whatever 95 watt tdp is that too high does that kill it is that usd for that's, that's a conversion to usd now that's so here's the thing we were talking with our patreon backers a little bit about this the problem I have with this... See that guy just dropped the Patreon plug in there? That was That's pro. not what that is. That <laughs> was... Thank you. I, I've been watching you a while, man. I, I know. I know. You got that in there right at the beginning, too. So... This guy's seen a YouTube retention graph. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, talking to them. And the thing is, it is evolution for Intel to go to 6 and 12, right? That's yeah. definitely a movement. But if you're moving in that direction and then sticking a similar price on it to what you had on previous high-end i7s, well, like the low end of the HEDT CPUs, yep. I don't. It doesn't. It's not really that much of an evolution. So does this if seem? That's the price. Does this smell like uh, if that pricing is correct? Which I don't know if it is. But if it is, does this smell a little bit like 6950X? Yeah, well, so... Here's the two more cores. Yeah. Oh, by the way, it costs $700 more than the 8-core we had last gen. Right. Oh, by the way, there's an 8-core. And enjoy. One thing I can say about price, because yeah. I've, I've said this before, we had a uh, an undisclosed manufacturer talk to us not long ago about pricing targets, and I was told 10 to 20 more 
than the existing i7. See, there, there it's disruptive. Right. There, it's potentially a Ryzen clobberer. In right, your, right. I mean, you had you got this word right on your shirt here, gamers. <laughs> right. Would gamers have a reason to buy a Ryzen processor if the 8700K is 10, 20 bucks more than a 7700K? There's, you know, there's a whole lot of caveats in that question. How does it overclock? If, how, does if the, how is the platform stable? But let's yeah. assume it's a it's a reasonably well thought out Intel launch. Let's assume Turbo Boost up to 4.7 works as expected. Let's assume that everything is uh, goes well. Should you even buy a Ryzen? If you only play games and you're looking at spending about the same amount of money, then probably not. If it's $100 more than an R7 1700 and you do things like actual content creation that is CPU accelerated, not just GPU accelerated, yeah. then you should definitely be looking at Ryzen. So uh, I, I think it, it comes down to a lot of things. You know, there are a lot of people with the rise and launch where people who are content creators are realizing there's so much performance I've left on the table. Yeah. And they can really accelerate it now. And then people who aren't content creators but want to see AMD succeed yeah. are saying, I can multitask. But there's a difference between having Twitch and your music open and playing a game. Yeah and actual like what you do or what we do production yeah so it depends like at 408 dollars i think that's a little too much now the chart also has some expected pricing for other processors and it has the um it has the 8600k so that's the rumored six core six thread at 286. So we could be seeing this particular listing inflated on the i7 because that's the most popular we know from our Amazon sales affiliate link stuff. Mm. Uh, we know it's by far Intel's most popular channel processor anyway. Um, but if we're looking at, mm. let's say the price gap is more like 100, which is what it normally is. So let's say that one is more like, you know, 380 something at 286. Again, the gamer question, and the rumor is that the 8400 will also be a six core part. I mean, that, according to previous asterisk 400 parts, mm -hmm. should be like a 235, 245 dollar part. Yeah, and again, it's not really, it's not a linear evolution if the price increases. Yeah, it, yes. moves, it moves the bar. So currently, i5s, and we said this in our review of the R5s, there's not a lot of reason to buy an i5 right now. The i7 still holds on really well. Yeah. But you look at R5s and there's there's actual gains there. There's gains in frame times and specific games where you don't really get that change with an i7 because it's already got all the threads. Yeah. So, it, yeah, I mean, I, I would need to see i5s stay the same price if they're increasing core count or come down with the current core count to be viable to me still. I think part of the issue here, and it's not going to make up like $150, but part of the issue here is that we're going for another currency and converting back to USD. Mm. And it's not just dollar conversion that no, happens it's not. there. There's different pricings in different regions. There's, tariffs, there's import there's, taxes. There's all this kind of the stuff. There's the fact that this is an early listing, so they could yeah. be trying to they could be trying to convince stupid customers to pre-order based on this pricing that will actually drop on launch day once availability mm. is real and pricing is real and everyone gets their listings up. Yeah. Um, and some include like VAT and stuff too. Yeah. So. Yeah. So this yeah this could have like 90% included. So. So we'll take it we'll take it for what it is a rumor based on incomplete data at best. And, and I would say to add some value to the rumor, like my look at it is, if it is 400 to 410 for the i7, that's kind of too much. It might be a good performer, yeah. but that's more than I want to see. Yeah. If it's like 10 to $20 more than the current i7s, that falls in line with Intel's current price creep where every generation they've very slowly increased it yeah. dollars at a time. Yeah. So that's that's kind of how They really do play a long game, don't they? They do, yeah. man. Yeah. <laughs> It's like, sometimes you look at what they're doing and you go, but then other times you look at what they're doing and you go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, speaking of rumors with not a ton of credibility, this one's from WCCF Tech. <laughs> oh. Okay. Apparently this came out of Eurocom. Um, it is rumored, and this is, again, this is very early rumors, that the upcoming 10 nanometer ice lake will bump the core count from six to eight 
And then the thread count from 12 to 16 to match AMD's Ryzen 7, and that'll be second half of 2018. So the timing sounds right, because Intel does refresh every year, even if they don't really have anything to show us. Devil's <laughs> Canyon. Um, I mean, you or I could have guessed that, though. They're going to you know have a what? new processor next year. Yeah, but I wouldn't have. I actually wouldn't have guessed they'd go 8-core. I would have said they might not bother. Well, I was kind of expecting 8-core for Coffee Lake. So really? That, yeah, <coughs> yeah. Because, I don't know, like... It takes a while to make a CPU, so it's not like Coffee Lake is a response to Ryzen no, specifically as a piece of silicon. There might be marketing attached to it, that is, but... Yeah. There yeah. might be pricing attached, that is. Right. Like, we might have seen a six-core Coffee Lake mm. as, like, a 449 mainstream processor. Yeah, to we'll, really, we'll never to, know. To blur the lines even further. <laughs> right. Yes. I don't know. I don't really know much about Isolate. I don't know anything officially, and I haven't I, followed yeah. rumors. Yeah. Well, I think it's pretty damn early on. Don't the rumors get overwhelming at a point? I try to stay away from them. Right. Yeah. And we're so flung out. Like, that's something I've been saying about Wanshaw. We've been covering rumors of the same AMD parts for, like, over half a year. Like, I think we're, like, nine months in now, man. Okay. Like, Tinfoil hat. Damn. AMD rumors. <laughs> are they actually leaks, or are they buzz generation created intentionally? By AMD by or, a, a, or a company associated with by them. By AMD <laughs> or a company associated with them. And there's two facets to the answer. If you think it's people at AMD, do you think it is sanctioned? Or do you think it is like... Guerrilla like marketing? Guerrilla marketing from people at AMD <laughs> who like think they have hot shit AMD and want people to know about it. They have their own guerrilla marketing from uh, Red Team Plus. Team. Is that it? Yeah. Yeah, that's. I mean, that kind of fills that role already. I don't know. Like, I've only ever had one person approach me and say, here's some leaked information. Like, that's happened one time. Uh, and it wasn't really anything to work with. Like, it was, <laughs> it was clearly a... Please post this. We need something. Yeah. So it wasn't like our wasn't, IHSs are soldered. Right, but it wasn't from a big three like major engineering right. company. So I don't I like there's so I don't think they would need to manufacture rumors. It seems like the community kind of does that well enough on its own. <laughs> so I don't know. All right, fair enough. So my theory is that it's guerrilla. Because, I mean, if you've spent any time in Taiwan or around Taiwanese people working in Taiwanese companies, you'll know that the, the way the industry is inbred is actually unfathomable from the outside. Like, the way people flit around from company to company, sometimes even landing back at the same one right. multiple times, everybody knows everybody. And Taiwan is a small place literally yeah a small place and the thing about it is that even if you look at companies like well you could you could kind of go well amd's not headquartered in taiwan neither is intel sure but you got to understand if you want to build a motherboard for a cpu you're, you're working with people in taiwan and china and probably hong kong there's people in taiwan who have spec sheets for ice lake based on what intel's expecting like now like Definitely, they're thinking yeah. about it they're people, working on people it. who make retention the, the actual like socket yeah. retention kit yeah. probably already know or will soon. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I mean, and and you would think that loyalty or uh, legal, I don't know, like action ability at that level is so far removed that it'd be easier to leak something. Yeah. Yeah, rather than getting legal to sign off on something. Right. I mean, we've had like I've had really frank conversations with. Uh, okay, I'll I'll say with a big three company that I criticized recently. I'll say that. So one of them. So one of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, and the conversation went. Look, you guys have an opportunity right now to turn this criticism into a huge PR win. All you have to do is come on stream with me and talk about it. Talk about how you did something, maybe not wrong, but not in the consumer's but, best but interest. But not hide from questions. And say sorry and commit to do better. That's what you have to do. You can take this thing that we can hopefully both agree if we both live on planet Earth and drink the same water and eat the same food and live in the same reality, that we can both agree <laughs> happened. That's questionable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And you guys can just take it head on. And the email thread is actually quite long. 
Like it's a couple dozen replies. And there was a conference call that did take place where we talked about it and then it went dead. So it got killed by a C level or a VP level or legal and we're just not gonna talk about it apparently. That happens a lot with legal, I found. Yeah. Like going to, for example, a recent example, the statement on Vega pricing being exceptionally ambiguous, right? There was a reason for that, and it's a legal reason. Really? So, well, yeah, but not like we're going to get I in guess trouble. Could they be bound to it? Yeah, like a, pre- a certain degree. A preemptive, typical, like legal being overly concerned about specific phrasing. Yeah. And that kills a lot of conversations. Yeah. You know? It's really frustrating. Which is unfortunate because you, like, if you got people on this, either any kind of corporate representative to actually answer harder questions whether or not the uh, the answer is actually good yeah it, that'd still be a big thing yeah so definitely. that's unfortunate okay last topic that uh that i think should be a pretty good one for you um actually do you prefer this one or do you want me to find something else what's the other one uh hold on hold on i got this i got this um uh, this one that's kind of interesting okay Run, sure running a website so this was posted by good bites on the forum don't worry i know uh, but basically, in a nutshell, thanks to JavaScript, which is not to be confused with Java, the programming language, the Pirate Bay website has put code in their site that turns visiting computers into mining machines for cryptocurrency without the user knowing. So your CPU fan is just going to like ramp up. Visitors, visitors of the site are completely unaware of the activity. Other than if you open up Task Manager, you'll see that your CPU is spiking to really high load, maybe even reaching 100%. And you may notice that your system is going to be a little bit less responsive if you're quite familiar with how it's supposed to be running. So, Pirate Bay. Not run by super ethical people. So, regardless of what we say about the, the validity of this, yeah. I think they're going to keep doing it. But, your thoughts. So, as I understand it, after this was discovered, yeah. they said it was a 24-hour trial. Or yes. Something, which Here, is... I got a quote. You want a okay. quote? Yeah. The miner is being tested for a short period, approximately 24 hours, as a new way to generate revenue. So they didn't mince any words. No. <laughs> yeah, they don't care. From from like, I I will say that in a sort of malicious way, it is ap- it's absolutely brilliant to try and make money without being found out. But it's so, but it's so it's wrong. It's like, yeah. yeah, it's it's clever, but it's just like how the word "great" can be used for evil. Or good yeah. yeah, but it's I mean, a great idea. The the thing with that particular cleverness is that when you are found out, and they were, it's pretty bad. You're like really digging into high. It's generating more I don't power think, consumption. Yeah, you know? I don't think they care. Here's a question for you, though. If you're still a Pirate Bay user at this point, like, I don't follow the piracy scene as closely as I once did. It is no secret that I had a pirated copy of Far Cry. I definitely did. Part of the issue was that my disc one didn't work anymore, okay? But there were definitely other games I didn't have a broken disc one for. (laughs) Let's put it that way, okay? But... Even I know that with all the issues they've gone through, with some of the changes in terms of the personnel running it, oh, yeah. Pirate Bay is not Pirate Bay, and I wouldn't be over there using it. So in my mind, if you're still using Pirate Bay, are you even going to notice the CPU spike? Right. Are you going to know of an alternative? <laughs> are you just stuck with it? Yeah. I. If you're using it at this point, I guess you're either very loyal or don't know a better option. Loyal to what? A logo? Loyal to, I know this, I I like what I can get from here, and I haven't (laughs) looked elsewhere. (laughs) Like any other brand loyalty. You were talking about Apple a few minutes ago. Yeah, I was talking about Apple a few minutes ago. (laughs) This uh, CoinHive JavaScript miner has definitely been used before. We've talked about a similar story. I don't remember remember what website. I don't think it was a site at this kind of scale, though. No, I I don't even remember what it was. Like, it might have been... I feel like it has something to do with Minecraft, or I, I don't know. But, like, it's been used before, for sure. Like, here, I'm bringing up, um, is it .org these days? I, I don't know. I can't remember. But, okay, so bringing it up on Alexa, which is an inherently flawed yeah. data collection method. 
Apparently, they're like in the top 100 sites. Wow. Yeah. Global it, rank 89. If okay. You, if you check uh, trafficestimate.com or Quantcast, you'll get a, a pretty accurate picture. Yeah. Okay, so let's throw let's throw it over there as well. Um, the piratebay.org. Is it dot se? Um, probably I, changes. It, yeah, probably changes. Holy crap! Uh, estimated monthly traffic visits um, in the seventy million range per month. That's bigger than. Uh, Anantech, when it was like at its peak, it was about 40 million page. Well, it's somewhere around there, but they were at 40 million page views per, per month for a while. Wow. So, um, like, just to give you a sense of scale. <laughs> this also has it at an Alexa rank of 136. So, like, I don't know how up to date any of this data is. The point is, it's a big site. And if you were hitting, like, let's say half of the people yeah. noticed. If you were hitting 25, 30 million machines for, and, and it runs as long as the tab is open somewhere in your browser, so you might just for, leave for even a few hours a day. <laughs> even for that 24 hour period, that's pretty good. So yeah. If you hit a couple million systems, <laughs> yeah. And you just go to sleep and wake up with. Well, it's like a, it's basically they've built a botnet yeah. to mine that's that exactly they don't even have is. to install malware on. <laughs> Unless you, yeah, right. Right. So it's like brilliant in that way, but it's also like supremely dickish. So I think yeah, and uh, I. I mean, <laughs> you're in that community, so like I don't know. Is okay. Last last discussion point around this: Are you getting your just desserts for pirating? I don't no. know that I have a comment on that. Yeah. Are you sure? You're not. Gonna, come on! It's the land show. No one holds you to anything you say on the show. I don't. Show I don't anyway. think it's. I don't think it's necessarily just because I think it would have to be no. in a different direction. I think, but it's, I think it's justice relies on a fair trial. Blah blah blah. So yeah, yeah. So it's blah blah just. blah. Legal system. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. But I think it's like you're you're in like the 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 undercity and you're trying to pickpocket something. And someone's in your pocket too, and things are just happening. So you're painting the pirate as the downtrodden, like no, 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 like, like uh, no, you know, the, like the, the the Jedi's go down to the Undercity to do some shady stuff sometimes too. Sometimes good people go down there. I'm having a hard time following your analogy. I here. think so. I there are if you go to like the shady part of town to buy some like lifted item. And something bad happens to you while you're there. Like, you didn't ask for it to happen, but, like, nope. at the but same time... But you also time, could have avoided it. You probably could have avoided it. But then, and then now we can bring up the Sony Rootkit thing. <laughs> <laughs> could you have avoided it by going to the shiny store that's well lit on the main <laughs> See, street but then I feel bad. and buying it? <laughs> then I feel bad. But also, from the... I, don't know, I I think there are there are valid uses for torrents for one. Yeah. They're not as widespread probably, at least not publicly known. Uh, so there's valid reasons to use them. Uh, yeah. There are people who are visiting the site who we've we've used torrent. Mm -hmm. we, we use them we've for distributed games. files. Yeah, patching games, especially yep. way back in the day. I know. I think it was Eve Client. The best mm -hmm. way to download it for a long I time. I mean, was Blizzard. Torrent. Blizzard couldn't possibly have afforded dedicated servers in the <laughs> yeah. early days of WoW. You know. <laughs> You with all that, that StarCraft off. money. Yeah. And... With all that WoW money. You could turn off the peer-to-peer -peer downloading. Okay. So, sorry. Go ahead. You were going to say something, and then you were kind of letting us talk over you so that you could <laughs> avoid it. So, I'm not I'm not letting, not letting that happen again. I was, wasn't trying to avoid it. I think <laughs> uh, there are you, people maybe visiting the site for reasons that are not that don't involve torrenting or stealing software. I see. You know, what if, what if I'm researching a story, right? And I go there, yeah. and I'm affected. I feel really bad for the four people that that affects. <laughs> yeah. Me well, too. Those I mean, four you, you people You talk about like, Far Oof. Cry, right? Maybe uh, whenever Star Wars Battlefront Two came out, more than a decade ago, I had the disc. It didn't work because it had whatever yeah. security crap on it. And so I had to download the game. But right. I had a valid serial number. So to me, that was a justified use. Absolutely. Because I paid for it. Sure. It should work. Especially if you put in the serial number. Like, right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. That's, that's, I don't even, yeah. that's not even. Yeah. So I, I don't know that it's as simple as an eye for an eye in this instance. No. Yeah. No, it's yeah. not. So, so the collateral damage argument, the fact that it is not just if no. it is not 
you know, if there's no justice system. Yeah. Um, so, okay, we're in agreement then. They're gigantic dicks. <laughs> right. Okay, cool. Um, speaking of gigantic dicks, uh, Riley, oh. please come join us. Wow. Well, I could have meant that you're really well endowed. I didn't. Yeah, that's true. Well, thank you so much, Linus. That's so nice. <laughs> Such a nice thing to say. <laughs> Such an awkward <laughs> thing to say. Um, so, We're not introduce to... yourself. Hi, I'm Riley. I'm from a channel called NCIX Tech Tips. You may or may not have heard You've of it. You've probably never heard of it, uh, yeah. Linus. But uh, <laughs> we make we make videos about computers, sort of like you, but uh, <laughs> sort of in the style of Linus. But he's gone now. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> mentally. <laughs> Look, I feel like I. <laughs> when you have kids, you'll understand. Yeah, no, I'm gonna be calling you up for advice. Yeah, my advice: to... just get the operation now. Okay. No, I'm just kidding. I love Got my it. kids; they're wonderful. If my kids are ever watching this in the future, no, I already, yeah, I already took the advice. No, no, no. Advice. this is gonna this is gonna <laughs> end up being like one of those things where you you say, "Look, like I'm not saying you know Hitler was." You know, or what? I didn't say it. I didn't say it. See, <laughs> but where people take the clip, right? They Whoa, take it, yeah, yeah. They take You're it out of the context. For it. Oh, you know what? Actually, I'm gonna kick you off for a second okay. because I'm sure you want nothing to do with our like sponsors and yeah, stuff. Yeah. Okay. See you later. Sorry, you'll be back. You'll be back in a second. I promise I'll bring you back. That, I, I didn't just bring you in for that. Right in front of the camera. Right in front, right in front of, the of the camera. Brilliant. Um, it's like he makes videos. So our sponsors today, Squarespace. I wonder yeah. how. You know what? I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go off script. Actually, I'm not gonna go off That's script a, don't because do we it. Might, I'm just. There I'm, might be a difference. We're gonna end up saying bu build it beautiful, which we're not allowed You're to just... say during our Squarespace spots. It's like, gonna happen. Like three minutes have gone by and there's been two of them. It's gonna happen. Come on, right? <laughs> hold um, it together, man. Squarespace, the place to go if you want to build a beautiful, simple website. It starts at just twelve bucks a month. You get a free domain if you buy Squarespace for the year. It's super easy. Like if we were building Floatplane on Squarespace, it would be done like ages ago. Uh, all you gotta do is you pick one of their templates, you like drag and drop pictures and text boxes, you populate everything and boom, you've got a beautiful website that works great across every device. And they've got tons of great features to make your life easy, like their commerce module, Every website comes with a store. Their cover pages, which lets you set up a beautiful one-page presence in minutes. And, uh, oh, you can publish content in Apple News format. No, that's not new. Directly nope. from the Squarespace blog module. They've also got their logo designer. Basically, it's awesome. You can start a trial with no credit card required at squarespace.com slash when. Then, when you look at your site and you go, gee, I'd sure like to keep this. <laughs> well, you gotta start paying. And you can use offer code when to save 10% on Squarespace. On your first purchase. On your first purchase, thank you for that. No worries. I'm genuinely thank I you got for that. You. Our second sponsor is iFixit. Do they really need an introduction? Yes. Apparently they think they do because yes. they're still sponsoring the WAN show. Thank you for needing an introduction. We, we love you guys. Um, we really do. iFixit makes great products. We use them for the last week. They have great guides. So if you want to be part of the right to repair revolution. Or even if you don't care about that whole politicized sort of thing that's going on, and you're just gonna, whether it's illegal or legal, you're just gonna repair your stuff regardless, iFixit's got you covered. They've got guides for how to do it. They've got replacement, hard to find parts, things like gaskets and, and uh, adhesive seals, stuff that you otherwise wouldn't be able to put your device yeah. back together with, and they've got all the tools you need for disassembly. And their ProTech Toolkit, which is awesome, is now only $60, including their 64-bit driver kit, all the prying and wedging tools you need to take apart almost anything. Super their helpful. suction cups, their flex extension, um, and it's awesome. So basically, head over to ifixit.com slash Linus and snag a ProTech toolkit for just 60 bucks. Odds are you'll spend less on your ProTech toolkit than you would have on a single repair, taking it to a shop to have somebody else do it for you. And then you'll be equipped for the future. <sighs> Leading us to our last sponsor, Dun, 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 oh god, do this again? Hold on, hold on, no nip slip! No, no, no nip slip! Inappropriate, wow. Hold on, hold on, we're keeping it nip, split, nip, nip slip free. We're trying, we're trying. We're trying. Oh, no. yeah. yeah! Did it! Heck yeah. Mac Weldon! I'm still really enjoying my job. So Mac Weldon. 
tons of comfortable clothes, whether we're talking underwear, socks, shirts, undershirts, hoodies, sweatpants. They are so confident you're going to love them that if you order, <clears throat> they will actually, so you order like a pair of boxers. If you don't like your first pair, you can keep it and they will still refund you. No wow. questions asked. Best thing about Mack Weldon for me personally, as someone who sweats a bit, you know, it's, it's not really sweat. It's more of like a glow. You know? Okay. Healthy glow. Wow. Um, they have no. a line of silver underwear and shirts that are naturally antimicrobial. That's what silver does, which, if you guys know much about sweat, is what causes it to smell. And uh, so they are naturally, actually odor killing, which is pretty cool. cool. Yeah. So go over to MacWeldon.com and use offer code tech tips to save 20%. 20%. Go check it out. Pretty good. Comfy clothes, and you won't smell as bad as me. Unless I'm also wearing Mac Weldon. Then again, if you don't sweat as much as me, then like, I mean, it's it's not magic. It's antimicrobial. It's not like, mm. it's not like a freaking chemical bath. <laughs> um, so, so how, many, how many times <laughs> do you think you've shown it. your audience your nipples at this point? Actually, very well. Okay, because I feel like I've personally I think he's seen them gone out of his way. Yeah, like a number of times. He's like, oh, here, oh, I can show my nipples here. Yeah, they're, they're okay nipples. Let's, let's they're great nipples. I mean, they're not like they're you know, okay. they're yeah. not like really disgusting or anything. So yeah, like, I'm not. No, they're fine. I they're remember fine even nipples. one of our one yeah. of our first recruitment videos. Like, I was like, yeah, I'm just gonna wear my boxers. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. that's like, it. Like I wrote that portion of the video where Ed comes out with a laptop, and he's. He's just like, okay, Linus, are you ready for the shoot that... And I'm just like in my boxers with sunglasses on holding like two MP5s. Yeah. <laughs> and he's just like, yeah, nope, no, that, nope. Yeah, that and I'm just like, what? What? That seems, what? Like, a, that seems like an Ivan move. Y yeah. MP5? So we were just trying to have some... It's so weird that they used to work together yeah, for a long what? time. And now it's <laughs> two again. Wow. So interesting. Oh my goodness. We would have seen that coming. So, a similar sense of humor. Let's jump right into this. Have you had a look at this? Have you seen this? Yeah, you heard about yeah. this? Google buys HTC, but it's a little more complicated mm. than that. So the original article here is from Android Central. 1.1 billion? Basically for the right Jeez. to hire people? You know, I don't okay, know. I feel like they... they 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 what who what who do they hire Motorola before? They, well, they, they bought, they bought Motorola. Motorola, yeah, and, and then, then flipped they, them to and Lenovo. Then they flipped them over, so I feel like I think, maybe they were little, like, yeah. okay, we tried Ooh. buying a phone company before and it didn't work out. Well, maybe the issue was that they bought Motorola, who right. hadn't done anything relevant. I mean, okay, lots of patents, mm. mm -hmm. but okay, so this is at it it, effect, it affects apparently about two thousand employees. The reason why I'm stuttering is. This deal is to be able to hire them at a cost of about $550,000 per employee. These now, are some primo employees. <laughs> yeah. They are the best They're employees. Silver They're the best employees you've the ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> you've never seen employees like this. <laughs> Um, Trust me. <laughs> now, to be clear, this also gives them a non-exclusive license to HTC's intellectual property. Now, I mm. suspect, if I had to guess, based on that HTC's two th well, non-exclusive is fine, because from what I can tell, Google doesn't want HTC to go out of business. Mm. So they're not going to like exclusively license everything and hire, what, what is it? I think it's about half of their staff. Is that right? Is it half? I don't know. I think it's something like that. It's don't don't quote me on that one, though. But it's a, it's a significant number of their staff. They don't want them to go out of business because mm. they still, I, I believe they still intend to contract manufacture with HTC. They are not acquiring any of the manufacturing. Right. I wonder if the employees get any of the cash from their like oh, right to be sold like cattle. I agreement. super bet not. <laughs> like like this is so weird. Yeah, yeah. It's like they're paying Google's paying HTC for the right to pay the employees <laughs> their wage. <laughs> but whether, they don't get anything. Out of it. Whether HTC has made anything relevant in the last three years or not, Ooh. they own they did the squeezy thing. Sorry, go ahead. They own a ton of cell phone IP because they were the OG Android cell phone manufacturer. Mm. Um, so one of, the, one of the biggest challenges around building a product is not figuring out how to build a product. One of the biggest challenges is figuring out how to build a product without infringing on an 800-pound gorilla who's going to just lawsuit you into the dirt mm. yeah. for building something that happens to infringe on their patent, even if you developed it independently. 
I mean, that's why it's pretty much impossible for anyone else to show up and become a GPU manufacturer at this point. It's like done. Intel tried. And if Intel can't do it, quite frankly, well, maybe Apple could still do it. My question is... But <laughs> other than that, <laughs> I don't think so. My, my question is, how many times is Google going to do this Like when an Android phone manufacturer is struggling? Because when they bought Motorola, Motorola was basically... Yeah. Like almost done. irrelevant. Yep. And then if they hadn't been bought, they would have been done. But now they're doing great again. Well, sort of. But like you know, the, yeah. The, you're seeing. I wouldn't be surprised if it kept happening. Remember, it's yeah. really hard to tell if a Chinese-backed company is doing great. Though. Well, okay. I don't know their numbers. Because they just could mean... just be getting like you could be seeing like all these ads and all these new like products and all this stuff. Mm. But it could be just literally Chinese government money just buying, paying for all of it. True. And then just buying the inventory off the shelves when it's done and burying it in a hole. Like, we don't know. <laughs> or incinerating it. <laughs> and then creating rain to wash it out of the air. <laughs> like, we don't know. Yeah. No, no, that's fair. But in terms of, like, brand awareness, I mean, I know, I know that I've been hearing a lot more about, like, the Moto, Moto G series and stuff. Like, right. They're, they kind of found a niche as, like, this budget thing like my my brother-in-law has one i think they're killing it in india too right yeah is my understanding anyway i could so be like, wrong about is that. the same good thing gonna happen with htc like by they didn't buy the whole company they bought part of it but like i don't know it's gonna be interesting to see whether it actually saves them or not right i love htc i kind of have an emotional connection to them because they're did you did you ever see that original commercial with like with the uh, we are you and you and you and I the, think so, yeah. and the piano is like. Doom, doom, doom. <laughs> Anyways, I like that commercial. <laughs> That's so because that, that commercial, I don't want them to go. <laughs> yeah, under. yeah. It's probably from a PR firm. They were my that first. Hired an ad agency, yeah. but whatever. Yeah. yeah, my first Android phone was an HTC. I don't know. I just. There we go. Okay, now speaking of the feels from when you were a kid, this uh, original article mm -hmm. is from BBC.com. Toys R Us. Toys R Us. Files for bankruptcy protection in the U.S. and Canada. Damn. Um. Wow. 64. Six. What? I go there all the time. 64,000 employees so they have. Like, I wanted to start, like, I wanted to start a GoFundMe for real. A GoFundMe <laughs> for, for Toys R Us. Us. I think they're in the whole <laughs> 4 billion. <laughs> Four yeah. billion? Four, four billion, I think. We can do it, guys. <laughs> can we raise... If every person on Earth, <laughs> legitimately, every single one of them we need a Sarah, contributed 50 cents. <laughs> we need a Sarah McLaughlin commercial. Yeah. 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 Uh, <laughs> look, in the eyes, look in the eyes of this Batman action figure. Um, so a U.S. bankruptcy judge approved a loan of more than $2 billion to help stabilize the toy chain. And I mean, I love Toys R Us as much yeah. as anyone. But why is anybody giving gigantic big box retail chains billion dollar loans? I was going to say, this yeah. is just another Amazon created corpse. Mm. Like, mm -hmm. like Amazon just murdered this company. Yep. Yep. I mean. Would you lend them $2 billion? No. <laughs> uh, I'd have to get $2 billion first. <laughs> Clearly, they <laughs> already. For, right? yeah. I'm not the, sure how the, to answer that question. The fact that they owe, you know, $2 billion, $3 billion dollars sure tells us that. everything we need to know about. Uh -huh how the business is going. Billions! Yeah. I mean, the stuff they sell is like 30 bucks. <laughs> well, I don't know, Lego, man? Okay, that's true. Lego's expensive. expensive. Yeah. yeah. So in 2016, about 13.7% of all toy sales were online, and that's up 6.5% from that's, five years ago. That's you know, it's in interesting, 2016? Though. That's in 2016. That's last year. Dang. In countries where Amazon is not as big, so the UK, the EU in general, Asia, not included in the bankruptcy. Really? So it's just countries where Amazon is big. Because yeah. I wonder who killed Toys R Us. <laughs> this is the thing <laughs> yeah. about the, the rise of Amazon. It's like, you know, I Justine was saying she can order something and have it arrive in 15 minutes. We don't have that luxury here no. in Canada. No, not yet. But you know. But it's like it's it it's sounds same incredible. Day. Yeah, maybe it's by nine p.m. But it's yep. same day. But even here, it's like a couple days as long mm. as it's got Prime. We have a lot less Prime selection. But like, I definitely get my money's worth well, out of Prime. That's for free shipping. If you yep. want to pay for it, you can get it by nine p.m. same day. Yeah. If you as long as you order before, I think it's eleven a.m. or something. And it's just like it's actually more. It takes less time, like out of my life by by an order of magnitude. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. To where I just like I, I like if we if my if my kids have a stupid birthday party to go to, hmm. I just go Amazon top selling toys, find something that doesn't look like plastic garbage, 
order it and don't think about it anymore because my wife will wrap it. And also, you, <laughs> and also, you don't have to feel like kind of a weirdo walking into a toy store as a grown adult. You know, like this is for this isn't for me. I, this is for, <laughs> <laughs> this, this for my friend. <laughs> this is for my friend. This is for my friend with a pedo stash. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Oh. Yeah, you had your pedo stash was great. By the I, way, I want to bring it back. You should bring you, back the pedo every stash. time I shave, I just shave the whole thing and forget that I'm like, oh yeah, I want a stash. You gotta bring. You know what? If you want to remember, just no, take but, like a big sharpie and just draw on here. <laughs> And then you'll see it until it grows over. And it'll look basically the same. Yeah. <laughs> hey, it'll remind you. <laughs> I had that for a long time, but it's 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 almost mainstream now. It's too, you know. I was it's a hipster when I had now. it. Yeah. 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 It's like now you see a guy with a mustache, you're like, oh, it's, it's not just another cool dude with a mustache. All right. So last topic of the day. This could change memes forever. <laughs> hmm. Oh. Pepe the Frog's creator. Oh boy. Gets legal against the alt right. So, yes. The creator, Matt Fury, and his lawyers have taken legal action against the alt right, serving cease and desist orders to several alt right personalities and websites, including Richard Spencer and Mike Cernovich. Uh, so, Spencer uh, Pepe is all over his site and the mascot for his podcast, Alt Right Politics. <laughs> and for Cernovich, uh, he used a 3D version of Pepe dancing with Hillary Clinton, reading aloud sections of her new book. He's also served a cease and desist against r slash the Donald. And as someone who has tried to contact Reddit about the content on their site that's before, I can well. <laughs> I can say that's probably not going anywhere. They're really, really good at just ignoring things. They've also issued DMCA takedown requests to Reddit, Amazon, YouTube, and Twitter, notifying them that use of Pepe by the alt-right on their platforms is copyright infringement. And at the end of August, Fury's lawyers actually reached a settlement with Eric Hauser, who appropriated Pepe's image for use in an Islamophobic children's book. So they forced him to stop selling the book and made him donate the profits to the Council on American Islamic Relations. Apparently, Google Play has stopped selling Build the Wall the Game uh, <laughs> because of advertising with special guest appearances from Pepe. That's why Previously, they stopped selling it. Apple had. <laughs> Previously, Apple had refused to publish the game until it removed Pepe the Frog. And Apple has a blanket ban against Pepe the Frog that it has enforced against multiple app creators. This is fa fascinating because it kind of opens up a conversation about who owns memes. Yes. Like, memes have kind of existed as a sort of, like... Oh, it's a great... Distributed content that yeah. kind of ar arose from the internet, sort of, organically. So it's like, yeah. if you make a meme and it becomes a meme, do you own the copyright? And and the answer until now, though I don't, to my knowledge, this hasn't been like seriously well, legally defined. I don't really defined. think it's a question. I think you absolutely do. Right. Because so, you created but, something. But, but it's like, mm -hmm. you, a lot of the time it's derivative, but not derivative enough. enough. Yeah. Right. You didn't create anything. You captioned it in a lot of cases. Yeah. Right. And the caption is often part of the original creation. And and it has never been enforced no. to this kind of a degree. Now, to be clear, it looks like Matt Fury is only going after the alt-right here. Mm -hmm. But if he wins a bunch of these battles, if he wins a battle against Reddit, imagine he wins against Reddit. There's some there's some problems, though. If he only goes <laughs> after the alt-right, yeah. that would mean that he's doing it because he doesn't like how very specific people are using it. Exactly. I don't think that's a way that you can defend it. Also, he let it happen for so Long, I think that hurts his case a lot. That he probably won't be able to defend it anymore because he seemed okay with it. I think we've even talked on the WAN show yeah. about how at one point in time he was just like, Pepe the Frog is just a thing, man. And it was like the most stoned statement <laughs> I've just, ever read. It's just the frog. On the Do you remember that? I, it was I from quite a while ago, but it yeah. was like a very like, everyone just gets to coexist and just Pepe the Frog is just awesome. <laughs> Pepe um, the Frog is for everyone. But it's, it's probably, it's so he's great. probably taking a bunch of crap for it. Yeah, mm. very likely. I mean, But the, it's been so long and that statement came out. And if there's a statement saying, sure, you can use it, he's basically screwed. The obvious parallel here is, is to the PewDiePie situation where he, yes. the Firewatch developer goes and yeah. does a DMCA takedown specifically of PewDiePie's Firewatch content because they didn't agree with how, you know, with... And, and, and the we, they there's want a similar problem there, which is probably why you're bringing <laughs> this up. But on Firewatch's website, there's a specific, yes, you can use this for streaming and video creation right. and you can monetize it. Mm. 
And like it, that one's a little bit more direct. The Firewatch yeah. one is that's very pretty black clean and white. Uh, I'm not even 100 percent sure about the Pepe the Frog one. It was from a while ago, and I think it was pretty vague, anyways. Yeah. But if there's a confirm that you can use it, like, right. I mean, to be fair, is 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 the question whether he's a he like he's justified in doing this? Because I uh, think he is. Yeah, I don't think that's the question. I think the he's, question of whether well, it's like legally yeah he's justified whether he'll in, win I'm talking about whether I think he'll win right yeah. whether he's justified in doing this is not the debate for sure yeah. mm-hmm. if yeah. if someone creates an image it belongs to them right and people can't use it without permission but what the the discussion is is around the fact that this has always been this gray area yeah and now we're opening up this can of worms that goes okay if people are going to start defending their memes then are we going to kill memes. I don't this think is how we memes will. die. Not with a bang. <laughs> but with a whimper. <laughs> but with glorious applause. Um, I think there will still definitely be Star some... Wars. Yeah, yeah. Gotta, gotta fit it in there. Yeah. Um, I, I think there's definitely still gonna be some, like, freeware memes. And I bet you there will be, like, a Reddit community around, like, anything posted in here. If it is OC, has some license, like, the, the public memeing license, where oh, everyone man. is allowed to use it forever. And then people are going to start creating memes out of stuff that comes out of there, and then memes will be saved. I think, I well, bet you that will happen. If if this, like, goes through, I bet... No, no. The, the, the internet would, would rally around memes. Imgur and Reddit would get behind 4chan memes. too. Let's okay. not leave them. They're out. all all these g- big sites, they're all going to get behind me. Let's just let's bring back E-bombs world while we're at <laughs> yeah! it. Yeah. They will get behind memes it. too. <laughs> Why not? I mean, for this to for this to be the death of memes, uh, it kind of re- requires every meme creator to yeah. also do that. <laughs> to, to, yeah. To, to, yeah, go after copyright for like their memes, right? So, Which like, I don't think. Yeah, I don't think the generally people who are responsible for creating these kind of things. I would be a lot more hesitant to use them though. If, use what? if anyone had won a legal fight ever. Mm, yeah. True, 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 true. Yeah. As an but, individual, I might just YOLO it, but as a business, dead. I think as an individual, you'd be fine. But how does fair use play into that? Because, like, if you take a meme and you're like, okay, I'm going to make a copy of this meme and put your, like, block text caption on it, that's not, I mean, that's technically parody. Mm-hmm. It's technically kind of I think of you'd like have tough. to actually For commercial change. use, it's tough. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, if it's commercial use, I think just that's why these are kind of clear difference, especially when... Uh, there was the exact same font usually on the previous one. Yeah. I don't think you'd get away with that. Yeah. Right. I think yeah. you'd have to change the core of the image. Yeah. Mm. Mm-hmm. All right. So that's pretty much it for the WAN show for today. Thank you guys for tuning in. Big thanks to our special guests, Justine, uh, Stephen, and Riley. You can check out, uh, well, I mean, you're watching on Twitch right now, or maybe you're not. Maybe you're watching on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, we'll have links to uh, where you can go check those guys out in the video description. If you're on Twitch, Google is a really cool website. Yeah. It works quite well. There's everything on there. Yeah. They got everything on Google. All right, I'm rolling rolling the outro. I'm rolling the outro. I mean, they can still hear us. You guys are killing me here. They heard you say I'm rolling the outro. You guys are killing me. Way to be subtle, Linus. You're killing me here. Are you alive? Um, You're killing me. I can still be alive while you're killing me. What's taking so long? Am I dead? (laughs) Am I alive? I do not know. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, my God. How long does this outro go?